In this video, we're firing lasers with the Flux Beambox Pro, a capable laser cutter with a 50 watt CO2 glass tube, decent cutting area, and some clever features. But is it worth the 4,000 US dollar price tag? Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and this is a laser cutter. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Despite having worked in the laser cutting industry in the past and the technology being older than the hobby 3D printer market, this is only the second laser cutter I've ever reviewed on the channel. For years now, you've been able to buy very high-end laser systems such as those from Universal Laser with staggering sticker prices to match or budget priced units straight from China with spotty support and quality control. But this machine from Flux fits into the emerging prosumer smart laser cutter market, placing it up against other units such as the Glowforge, Emblazer 2, and Makeblock Laserbox, which I reviewed last year. This isn't Flux's first laser cutter either, with the Beambox Pro building on the success of Beemo, a laser cutter they crowdfunded on Kickstarter, which looks like it's only just shipping now, a few months after the estimated delivery, which considering everything going on right now, is actually pretty cool to see. But this video isn't about the cute little Beemo, it's about this beast. The Beambox Pro is the largest and most powerful unit currently offered by Flux, and it arrived well packaged, and it needed it. With global logistics struggling, it was delivered by an independent courier with a truck that lacked a tail lift and it was stacked on its side. Thankfully though, it was unscathed and after performing some very simple but important first checks and setup, including fitting the critical clear plastic cover, it was good to go. I would classify the category of smart laser cutters as those with additional usability features that makes them easier to use than cheaper units. So what does the Beambox Pro offer? Well, to start, it comes calibrated from factory. Yes, there's a chance things might misalign during transport, but this is a huge deal. The laser beam needs to be bounced off three mirrors before being focused through a lens towards the workpiece, and it's invisible. So doing this yourself requires heaps of patience, trial and error, it's not very safe, and honestly takes tons of practice. Sure, you might have to do it in future with the lens, tube, or mirrors when they need replacing, but from the box, you could be cutting within 15 minutes, which is unheard of. This machine offers a very usable cutting area of 600 by 375 millimeters and a maximum working depth of eight centimeters. It doesn't cut eight centimeters deep, but that means you have a fair bit of room for objects that you might want to engrave. The 50 watt glass CO2 laser tube is no joke and craps all over those toy diode laser 3D printer attachment things, which I don't like at all, and you might see online. So make no mistake, this machine is quite serious and can cut wood and acrylic up to eight millimeters thick if your game. The interface is superb too, with a full color touch screen and USB or Wi-Fi connectivity. There's a fair few options in the menu that don't do anything currently, but instead look bookmarked for future updates. So for now, this trace option doesn't do anything, but I'm pretty curious to see what it does in future. Flux has developed their own software to run the laser cutters called Beam Studio. It's okay, not great. I've experienced quite a lot of difficulties manipulating the vectors within it. It seems to be hard to grab and move them around and it doesn't have any sort of curve compensation offsets or nesting features, but to be fair, they are quite advanced features. It does, however, take advantage of a camera on the laser cutter head. Unlike the laser box I tested last year, which used an ultra fisheye lens in the middle of the cutting area to capture the whole thing at once, this laser moves the head in a grid pattern around a selected area, capturing individual images and sticking them together to show you what's on the print bed. In my video, laser cutting tensegrity structures, I hadn't quite figured out how to use it yet, but man, does it work well. Instead of trying to preview cuts and use guesswork, you can literally see where your material is and plan the job accordingly. This feature alone makes the usability and accessibility of this laser leagues ahead of the lower price K40 style systems you might find online. Power settings and material focus are also critical aspects of successful laser cutting, and these are left up to the user. With a simple acrylic offset, you swing down and a mechanical bed adjust for setting the right focus, 
and Beam Studio also has a few descriptive profiles to get you started in terms of laser power and speed, but actually warns you about going too fast or using too high a power, which can significantly shorten the tube's lifespan. And that's something I actually quite appreciate to see because this is a big rookie error, running tubes too hot and killing them really fast. I see it way too often. All right, so now before I get into projects I made, I need to talk about fumes and ventilation. Laser cutters burn through material to cut it instead of melting like a 3D printer does, and as such produce a substantial amount of smoke and fumes, depending on the material being cut. This machine has a built-in exhaust fan and short length of tube, but no filter system. If you want to use this in an enclosed or densely populated area, forget it in its current state. You need to vent externally, and I highly recommend adding a proper filtration unit, such as the one offered by the Ultimate 3D Printing Store. They are not cheap, but really do cut down on the fumes and particulates which this machine creates, or any other laser cutter for that matter. Personally, I find acrylic to be especially accurate, but it's just about the only plastic you can safely laser cut at home. Polycarbonates and PVC, for example, are a big no-no. They release poisonous, or caustic gases if burnt, so don't even think about laser cutting these materials or any material if you don't exactly know what it is. And that includes stuff like fake leather, that usually is PVC, which again, is a big no-no. For cutting of woods though, like high quality formaldehyde free plywood or cardboard, the smoke is pretty manageable and considering how many wood fires are around my area in winter, I doubt anyone's even going to notice I'm running the laser. And thank goodness they have fitted an air assist to the system, something that was missing from the make block laser box. And an air assist is critical on good quality cutting because it blows a strong direct stream of air towards the cutting area and blows the smoke and debris down and away from the lens, resulting in far cleaner edges than a laser system without it, and also keeping that lens cleaner for a lot longer so it doesn't burn out and require replacement. Okay, let's check out some of the things I've laser cut on the Beam Box Pro. Now, I tried a few different materials and different thicknesses, and I tried engraving and cutting. And this is just a selection to demonstrate what this machine is capable of. And let's start with the tensegrity structures. Now, I did show these in a previous video. These are laser cut from three millimeter or two and a half millimeter thick acrylic. So acrylic laser cuts incredibly cleanly and this machine had no issues at all cutting through at a reasonable speed. These, these clips are not sped up at all. And you can see that the edge finish is really nice. Acrylic has just a really clean edge when it cuts. Unfortunately, it's a little bit brittle. It's not really the strongest plastic, but in terms of the aesthetics, it's absolutely gorgeous and these structures are really cool. I was able to tap into the acrylic and if you're interested to see more about how I made these, there's a whole video here. But I also wanted to try to cut and engrave some wood. So this is pine. It's not treated pine or anything like that. It's just straight pine. Laser cuts really easily and just makes wood smoke. So it's very, very good to cut. It's eight millimeters thick and I was able to punch a hole right through at a two, mil two millimeters a second. So that's not super fast, but that's pretty impressive. And it's only really capable of that because of the 50 watt laser tube, but the etching is what makes this so impressive. So I'm a big fan of old patents and I like going through and finding expired patents that you can actually just rip the art artwork from. As far as I understand, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I really do like etching these complicated drawings and there's heaps of really interesting mechanisms and things you can find. So this is for some toy, I've forgotten exactly what, what it was, but it's a good showcase of how precise the actual engraving can be on this machine. Now again, it has an air assist, which is a big deal. With laser cutters that don't have an air assist, you'll get smudging where the smoke settles on the piece and doesn't go away far, fast enough and you, you lose definition. But this actually has a really sharp edge and different woods engrave differently. This pine is quite light and when it when it uh, gets burnt, it doesn't discolor as much as others might. So you might wanna put a stain or something on to bring the colors out more. I just bumped the power up just a slight amount to get a bit more definition with where it engraved and where it hadn't. And the engraving's actually quite deep. You can see in these pictures, it's actually quite a deep engrave. Uh, the one thing about engraving though is it's slow. All the pictures you'll see online are sped up. This engrave took about 13 minutes. Uh, and it's not very big. So keep that in mind, engraving is quite slow, cutting is a lot quicker, especially when you consider it's comparing it to 3D printing where you might be used to hours. Laser cutting is quite a fair bit faster, but engraving you have to really be aware, most of the things you see online are sped up. Uh, and then a project that combines the best of both worlds, 3D printing and laser cutting. This is a puzzle designed 
for a parrot, a parrot puzzle. It's for an upcoming video where I tested the intelligence of my local sulfur crested cockatoos. Uh, it's really fun, I can't wait to show you guys. But this is created using 3D printing and laser cutting. The purpose of the laser cut parts is to provide clear windows where the birds can see where the seed are, seed is, seeds are. <laughs> and then they had to pull out these, these dowels and the seeds roll, roll through. So the insides are 3D printed out of PLA. The supports are 3D printed but the front and back plates are laser cut. And it's a perfect use case of combining the best of both worlds. Laser cutting lets you make these lovely clear acrylic sheets that you couldn't really do unless you cut them by hand. You can't, you can't 3D print clear. And this complicated inside bit could have been laser cut two out of some stacks of thicker material. Remember eight millimeters is sort of the limit of this laser cutter, but 3D printing worked. And also the feet, definitely 3D printing is most suitable for that as a full three-dimensional part of a 3D printer. So really happy with how this turned out and the parts were all dimensionally perfect. Now you do have to account for kerf when you're laser cutting because the laser cuts a certain thickness off the material. It's not like 3D printing that will try to print exact. And the software unfortunately doesn't account for that, but I do have a plugin in Fusion 360 that very quickly creates a DXF that I can bring in and it does the offset for me. So really it's just an extra, you can create a sketch, run the plugin and export. It takes a few seconds and I'm okay doing that because the actual experience overall, this laser cutter is fantastic. Okay, conclusion time. The Beanbox Pro is the largest, most expensive offering by Flux currently, coming in at around four to 5,000 US, depending on the attachments and configuration you go for. That's half the price of the laser box I tested last year and about on par with the Glowforge laser printer. I do really like they've made the difficult aspects of running a laser cutter simple, like the mirrors are aligned from factory. Job preparation is super easy using the camera, and while the material focus is manual, it's easy to do, and the filtration option is open to your requirements, so you can go with one if you need it, or without if you think you can just vent externally. You could go with one of their smaller offerings and get the same usability features, but I really do feel the rough 600 by 300 millimeter area is a minimum for serious prototyping with a laser, beyond fun cutting and engraving of small objects. It is still, however, an expensive option, and many people would be tempted towards cheaper CO2 laser cutters from China, such as the incredibly popular K40 style laser cutters, which are like 400 US for free shipping. So if you're interested in buying a cheap Chinese laser cutter and what it's actually like and what's involved to make them work correctly, I highly recommend checking out this video by Michael over on his channel Teaching Tech to see what's actually involved. A big thanks to Flux and Roy from the Ultimate 3D Printing Store for providing the Beanbox Pro for review. And if you want to see more content around laser cutting, let me know in the comments below. Here on Makers Muse, it's my aim to empower creativity through technology, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later. Bye.